Welcome back for another book talk video. It's Tag Tuesday. Got a cat between me and the microphone. Hopefully it'll be fine. But if you heard purring, meowing, or things getting knocked over, that's what's going on. I'm back today for six tags again. I was really getting caught up last time I did one of these. And this one's going to get me caught up so well. I'm looking forward to it. But that's my challenge today to try to go through six tags and answer the questions. Gotta be honest, as always, I have not actually looked over all these questions in a while so I'm gonna answer them shooting from the hip answering them on the fly and that means my answer is not necessarily my 100% answer it's the answer I'm gonna give you today and my opinion can change over time who knows our first tag out of the six is the mid-year book freak out tag I've been needing to freak out We've got 13 prompts for this one. I was tagged by Courtney Ferreter in the sense that she gave an open tag. She's got a great video. All the videos and questions will be linked down below. I was also mentioned in Michael K. Vaughn's video. I'll link that. For the prompts, the best book I've read so far in 2021. I feel like that's a trick question. I've been doing book battles. I'm going to do a super book battle at the end of the year based off of all of my winners from each month. And that's when we'll find out the answer that question but if I was just gonna give you an answer right now it would be tough it would be really tough number two best sequel I've read so far in 2021 I'm gonna go with the bewilderness number two by Ben Reeves that was such a fun book they're novellas so they're short and easy to read a new release that I haven't read yet but I want to I don't know an answer to that I've been I've been reading what that I want to read I'll just have to pass on that when I get Yes. The most anticipated release for the second half of the year, Sylvia Moreno Garcia's got a new book coming out, and I am probably going to read that next month. Coming out August, maybe the middle of August, somewhere around there. My biggest disappointment this year was the Sarah J. Mass book that I read. I started January Strong by reading those books that were the Goodreads Choice winners for the different categories, but I've already said enough about that book. My biggest surprise this year was probably The Bewilderness number one. I was really impressed by Ben Reeves with his writing and how well he told that story in the novella. Of course, granted, it's continuing into a nine-part series. My favorite new author debut or new to me, I'm going to go with Margaret Pennard. She's new to me, but I know she's been online with BookTube and AuthorTube for quite a while. She's always popping up in the comments funny things to say she and i pick at each other some online but it's always friendly banter back and forth my newest fictional crush i don't have one my newest favorite character oh wow that would probably be the scientist uh, grace from project hail mary that was a great character really interesting there's another really interesting character in that book too but spoilers i won't tell you about that a book book that made me cry uh let's go with the shadow of the gods i really felt bad i really felt bad for brecca for uh well spoilers things happen and not all of it's happy a book that made me happy oh there have been so many books that have made me happy i've enjoyed reading in general since i just recently finished it i'll go with pride and prejudice and zombies because i enjoyed how playfully that the zombies were put into what is a wonderful work of literature the most beautiful book that i've bought so far this year um other than the spine freaking me out christopher paulini's book uh, to sleep in a sea of stars has the beautiful shiny blue in space but the spine for some reason it's the only book that i own like this it has the name of the author not not the title of the book and i don't understand but it's still beautiful blue in space on the spine I just wish the title was there. What books do I need to read by the end of the year? I definitely want to finish The Wheel of Time, and I'm hopeful to at least start, maybe get halfway through the Dark Tower series. I'm hoping to read For the Pillars of the Earth, the prequel, and what is now the third book in the series, though I guess with the prequel that makes it the fourth 
fourth book, but they're labeling it as number three. The prequel is labeled as number zero. And that's it. I did a tag. All right. My second tag for today is the How Do You Booktube tag. I was tagged by John at Hey Y'all Listen Up. This was created by Margaret Pinard and Beth Ann Bruninga Sokolar. All right, I'm ready to go. Here are the prompts. What made me start a booktube channel? This has got a little disclaimer to it if you haven't already explained this in another tag, and I have, so thank goodness I don't have to answer it. Number two, how do you just decide to subscribe to someone's channel, and how many channels are you subscribed to? Basically, I subscribe to everyone who does booktube or author tube or horror tube. If I see that they have a channel, I'll watch one of their videos and I'll subscribe. I am not picky, which is how I am subscribed to way more people than I can count. I have no idea what the number is. Do I unsubscribe from inactive channels and that sort of thing? No, I do not unsubscribe. And I, I get that a lot of you out there like to click that button and unsubscribe, but I would beg of you to not do that. I'm going to make a moral argument here that you should never unsubscribe to anyone's channel. And that is because as a content creator myself now, I can say it can be emotionally devastating to lose lose subscribers to your channel. So there's no reason to unsubscribe. Subscribing doesn't cost you any money. It doesn't take up any time or energy. And with the bell notification, you can completely choose who you really watch videos of all the time by clicking the bell and using the notifications up there in the notification section to watch your videos. So I would beg of you, please do not unsubscribe to people because once you're subscribed, you're part of the count, the total count of subscribers and I feel like it could really emotionally hurt people when they lose a bunch of subscribers all at once. So have no fear. If I am subscribed to you now, I will forever be subscribed to your channel. When and where do I watch BookTube? Well, it's kind of weird to answer this question because we've been in the pandemic situation the last year and a half or so. Oh, wow. It's been so long. So it's pretty much at home. I watch these videos at home. Though when I had to go into work, I would also watch them on my lunch break or before I actually started my work day, when I was just chilling, maybe eating breakfast at my desk, that sort of thing. How do I respond to comments? I click the little reply button. <laughs> And then I type. There has been an issue lately with YouTube deleting responses. And I think that AI has been programmed a bit glitchy to where it thinks you're spamming your own channel in your own comment section if you type similar comments to people. So now I've been trying to think of how to reply to people and phrase it in ways that are not the same of how I've already replied to other people in hopes that YouTube will not delete my own comments from my own video. Do I always respond? I would say 95% of the time I do, but sometimes I miss it. I have to go in to the YouTube studio and go to the comments section and check what I've missed because sometimes it doesn't send me the notification. Do I comment on every video that I watch? No, I do not. I will sometimes shadow lurk as a phantom menace watching people's videos and not always respond. And sometimes that is just because I don't feel like I have anything to add to the conversation. I try to respond as much as I can. Sometimes it's not easy though. Can't think of anything to say. Or I'm afraid that the little jokes that I make might be interpreted in a bad sort of way. So I'll, I will hold my tongue, so to speak. Do I keep up with content as it comes out or catch up on older content? I try to keep up with it. Like I was saying earlier, I use the actual notification function for watching most of my videos. So I'm, I'm scrolling through my notifications to try and get to videos. Sometimes I'll realize I missed something from a day or two or even a week ago, and then I'll go back and watch it and try to comment on it if I can. Do you use your home page feed to decide what to watch? Rarely. Um, there are some YouTubers who talk about the TV show The Blacklist and I don't subscribe to their channel because they talk about a lot of other TV shows as well. So I, and I don't want to get notifications for every single video from them. So to watch their videos I do, but I know their schedule. So on the days that I know they're going to have videos come out, I go to the home page and look for them and find them that way. YouTube always tells me about their videos, even though I'm not asking for notifications. It's so smart. The AI knows. It knows so much. All right, that's it for this tag because I'm not going to tag people. For all of the tags in this video, I should have said this with the first one, but all of these tags, I'm giving an open tag. Everyone out there watching right now, listening to this, you are tagged. Consider yourself tagged. Say that I tagged you. That's how the open tag works. For our third tag today, it is the dating 
Wrestling History book tag. And at first, I was confused and thought, oh no, they want to know my dating history. Like, I'm not going to share that. But it's about books. These prompts are actually about books. So I will read the book part of prompt. What book was your first love? Thinking back to when I was a kid, to the different books that we read, uh, or that I myself might have picked from the library, it's hard to say because of memory, but I'll go with the Boxcar Children. I remember enjoying those books. Number two, what is your favorite genre? What book do you really like outside of your genre? I'm an eclectic reader, so I don't necessarily have one genre, so this question doesn't really work. Number three, uh, what book catfished you? Was it good or bad? Oh, I hate when there's misleading marketing behind books. I've mentioned a couple times in the past that Lucy Foley's book, The Murder Mystery Set on the Island, I'll put it up on the screen. Oh, The Guest List by Lucy Foley was marketed as being like an Agatha Christie whodunit murder mystery, and it's not. The point of view is very different. It's a different experience. It's a great book, but it's not what it was marketed as. And the next question, what matters more to you, the length of a book or the ocean of emotion? I don't get hung up on size. Uh, to me, it's when I was younger, I was intimidated by big books, but now it's not a big deal to me. I've read so many books. I don't really mind. In fact, some of my favorite books are the big 700 to 1200 page. The next question, name a book that is way out of your league, but you went for it anyway. The only thing that I can think of, the only thing that comes to mind would be maybe some philosophical texts that I read either for graduate school, taking extra classes in English, or because I want to learn more philosophy. Uh, there was a book by Spinoza that I really had trouble understanding and figuring out really what its argument was and where it was going with it. The next one is a kiss, marry, kill option. Name three books that you would kiss, marry, or kill. I'm going to have to pass on this because my brain doesn't really entirely get how that concept works with books. I'm not going to kiss books. I'm not going to marry a book. Now, there are some books that maybe I'd be willing to say we could destroy them, but I don't want to attack books. Next question, what book do you keep going back to? I guess The Three Musketeers. It's a good option. It's it's a fun adventure story. But it's not my fault I go back to it. They make a new film or TV version every few years. At least every decade, there's another version that comes out. Name the book that is the bad boy or girl on your bookshelf. Ah, this is a weird question. Yeah, I, I don't really have an answer for this one. Name the book that you know will be a good read, but you're kind of into another book for now. I believe Stephen King... King's The Gunslinger is going to be an amazing book. I'm really excited about the concept of a guy who walks around with guns and throws them at people. I, a slinging guns sounds really exciting to me, but I haven't been reading it. Maybe I'll get to it next month. And then the last one on here is about tagging people. So again, open tag, you are tagged. I've made it through three. I could tell I was getting a little worn out, but I will continue. For our fourth tag today, it's the JFK book tag. I was tagged by the original creator very literary carry and i love the sound there very literary carry some great alliteration for the prompts i'm just going to read the part at the end what book with a large cast of characters would you recommend definitely the pillars of the earth by ken follett it's not overwhelming the way that the characters are introduced a little at a time number two what is your favorite book featuring a harrowing harrowing survival rescue or war story gonna be the red rising series by pierce brown darrow goes through a lot and it's not a normal war it's a space epic war it's amazing what is my favorite book that deals with disease or the medical field I'm gonna say the non-fiction book the devil in the white city because the serial killer in that has a bunch of knowledge that is of a medical or science sort of area oh so creepy so creepy how that turned out if you've not read The Devil in the White City, I highly recommend the chapters that are about the serial killer. Though, the other half of it, the chapters about the city planner, are pretty good too. What real or imagined dynasty would you like to read more about? Oh man, the Poppy War series was supposedly based on or inspired by real historical wars and battles that happened. And I, I think it would be interesting to learn the real history behind that. If 
you ran for office, what would your campaign song be? I would be inclined, first of all, to not run for office. I, I have no reason to want to be in the public spotlight that much or to be president or anything like that. I, not at all. But hypothetically, if somehow it happened. I would also assume that I was rich, which I'm not. But assuming that I was rich and powerful in a position to run for office, I would try and pay Disney a bunch of money and have someone adapt the Little Mermaid song, part of your world or a part of your world, reprise and make it about the pandemic that we've all been through and how we haven't been able to go out into the world and run on a campaign about trying to improve the world to make the world a better place that we can all go out into and where hopefully we wouldn't have these kind of pandemic shutdown situations in the future. Name the last book you read that was set in space. I recently finished book five of the Red Rising series. It's called Dark Age. Oh man, things get really intense at that point in the series. Do you have any neat desk items or mementos? I certainly do. What personal or... Oh, oh, you probably want to know what they are. Uh, one of my favorite items that I have is an old Beanie Baby of a mouse. It's a white mouse. I don't remember if it was a rare Beanie Baby or not. But to make money, when I was a teenager, I worked at Hallmark at a Hallmark Gold Crown store. I was a sales associate. And one of the benefits of that job was I worked at a store where we would get Beanie Baby, Beanie Baby shipments. And they were all the rage. And I had access to them before the customers did. So, you know, we employees were able to be like, oh, well, let's set that Beanie Baby aside so we can buy it ourselves, which was nice. I had a friend whose mother was really into Beanie Babies and I was able to get her some of the rare ones, the hard to find ones really easily. But I kept one after all these years. I kept one of those Beanie Babies because uh, he's a cool looking little mouse guy. What personal or political scandal would you like to read more about? Uh, none. I don't want any. I don't want any more scandal. I want. I want the scandals to end. Though I know that's not realistic. What book made you a better person? There have been so many over the years. My usual answer to this kind of question is: When I was in high school, reading The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn and the narrative of the life of Frederick Douglass both hugely impacted me. What are my thoughts on the Kennedy assassination? I have a lot of thoughts, but I have have no real expertise to back any of it up. I mean, I can tell you I live in Texas. I have visited the location of Kennedy's assassin. There's a museum research center set up there. I've been through all of that. I've certainly watched documentaries. I've read books. I've seen all kinds of movies about it. And ultimately, what I can tell you is it's confusing. I mean, my belief is we'll never have true answers. But I believe there are historical facts that definitely lie a Line LBJ with the Mafia. So historically, factually, we can say LBJ was funded by and had friends in the Mafia. And there seem to be clear links between the Mafia and what went down with JFK's assassination. But I mean, there's you're never going to get a clear thread that is concrete evidence to link it all. Alright, it's time for our fifth tag. This tag is the Geekology book tag. I was tagged by Hugo at Scientist Reading World, and he is the person who has translated this tag from Spanish from its original creator. Here are the prompts. What was the book you read that made you feel really geeky? Uh, I've read a lot of Star Trek books when I was a kid. I loved reading Star Trek and Star Wars both. Probably as a kid I felt really nerdy when I read the book Sarek because it's a Star Trek book that really is not about the main characters from Star Trek. It's got Captain Kirk's nephew and it's got Spock's father and so it was probably really nerdy of me to read a book that was set in the universe but not even really about the characters from the movies or the tv show show us your favorite collective figures that you have all right this goes along with the question earlier about things on my desk or bookshelves i've got a few funko pops i've got the one for v v from v for vendetta i've got cthulhu i've got <laughs> i've got the man in black johnny cash i've pre-ordered the captain kirk sitting in his command chair on the original series bridge but it's not in yet i also have a nice 3d printed yoda which the my librarian was able to do i gave her the money for the 3d printing material and she was able to print that i also have a tardis from Doctor Who and some other stuff. So some pretty pretty neat stuff on my bookshelves. Maybe someday you'll get that bookshelf tour. I was teasing maybe after 500 subscribers. 
I, I think that would be a good idea. Get me more subscribers. Do you have clothing that is geeky? Show us some of your favorites. I used to. I used to have a lot of geeky clothing. I do have clothes that have puns on them, that have jokes on them. But these days, I mostly just buy clothes for work or just comfortable things to wear at home. I mean, during a pandemic, who are you going to show off your clothes to? Have you ever done cosplay? If yes, show what you did. I've dressed up as several things over the years, but it was really when I was younger. I remember dressing up in a Star Trek The Next Generation uniform. Red, of course. I was a red shirt. I also have dressed up as a vampire. I mean, you could say Dracula, but, you know, generic vampire costume from Party City, which is another place that I worked as a teenager to make money. And when I worked at Party City during the Halloween time, they actually had us wear costumes at work, which was a lot of fun back in the day. What was the last comic or graphic novel that I read? Oh, that's going to be a toss-up. I'm not sure exactly the last one. I've got Wraith by Joe Hill, you know, the son of Stephen King. I've got the prequel to the Red Rising series, Son, Sons of Ares. I can't remember what the actual last one was, though. I'd have to go through my Goodreads history, and I'm not going to do that right now. What is your favorite game? My favorite video games would be Temple of Elemental Evil, The Sims 2 and 3, certainly not 4, They're moving in the wrong direction with that, and Minecraft. Oh, I love the open sandbox for Minecraft. What is my favorite manga or anime? I remember being a huge fan of Samurai X. Samurai X was Rurouni Kenshin. Unfortunately, the actual show for Kenshin, they turned his character into more of a comedic character. In Samurai X, he was an amazing assassin and very serious. So I preferred Samurai X over to this over the series. There, there's a lot of great anime out there. Did I used to play board games? I think it's funny that it's phrased like that. I still play board games. Uh, do I have any? Certainly I do. I love Clue. I love Monopoly. I love Scrabble. And while it's not a board game, so to speak, tabletop gaming for role-playing games, a lot of fun. That's it. I've done five tags. Let's do one more and then call it a day. It's the fantasy character trope tag. Again, and I was tagged by Hugo at Scientist Reading World. Here are the questions or the prompts. The Chosen One, a book you recommend to everyone. I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. It's such a powerful story. I just feel like everyone should experience that. The Secret Air, a book that surprised you, turned out to be more than you expected. I'm going to go with The Shadows of Carcosa, that book that MKV gifted to me. The Evil Overlord, a book that was poorly executed or a book that fell flat. I'm going to pass on that one. Just can't think of anything off the top of my head. Which means I've had a pretty good reading year. The Reluctant Hero, a book you are not sure you wanted to read. Okay, I guess for this, I could say A Blood and Ash, which was another one of those winners from the Goodreach Choice Awards from 2020. I believe I read the Sarah J. Mass book first, and then when I got to that one, I was like, oh no, what am I in for? But I actually really liked it. I liked it a lot more than the Sarah J. Mass book, but I felt like it was more of a fantasy story than a romance story. Just my opinion, though. The Lucky Novice, a great debut. I'm going to go with The Bewilderness by Ben Reeves. I know I said it earlier in the video, but such an impressive first book to be published by that author. The Mentor, a book that is formulative to your life. Formative to my life. Let's go with Lonesome Dove. You ride with an outlaw, you die with an outlaw. A book about a lot of different characters and you see what happens to them. And then last on here, The Animal Companion. My favorite book that has an animal companion is The Hero's Journey. No, wait. A Hero's... Hero, it's not Joseph Campbell's book. It's Hero's Journey. H-I-E-R-O. Hero. But I believe it's still pronounced Hero. Hero's Journey. It's a great book of classic fantasy. The main character rides on a moose. He rides on this magnificent giant beast. It's really a lot of fun. 
I highly recommend it. Wow, I did it. That's six tags. Remember, all of these are open tags. So you are tagged and you are welcome to do any or all of these tags. Don't worry, you can do them as individual videos. You don't have to do them all at once like I did. I'm now almost caught up. I'm ready to be tagged some more. I I'm good now that I feel caught up. Every day is a good day for a tag video or book talk. Peace.